Welcome everyone to the Character Playbook Speaker Series Native American Heritage Month event. My name is Ethel Branch. I'm the former Attorney General of the Navajo Nation and currently the Executive Director of Yehal Nido, which means Mira people have fortitude in times of difficulty in Navajo. And we do business as the Navajo and Hopi Families COVID-19 Relief Fund. I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. And um, I'm actually presenting to you from um, the base of Dokot Sleed, which is one of the four sacred mountains of the Navajo people. Um, and it's actually sacred and ancestral land to 17 indigenous nations in Arizona. Um, so it, again, it's an honor to be here with you. And um, I wanna go ahead and move us along in this program. And if, if you guys want to also give an acknowledgement in the chat on uh, to the ancestral lands that you're located on, please do that so we can get a sense for the representation that we have uh, with us today. And, um, you know, we're so thrilled to have you all here with us. Um, we have students from all across the country. I hear, you know, if everyone signs on, we'll have about 12,000 of you on here, which is really exciting. Um, and we're so excited to engage in a meaningful conversation with you and with our wonderful guests here today around Native American heritage and character building and what it means to be part of a community. Um, students and teachers, please put your school name in the chat as well so we can shout out to you throughout the event. Um, <clears throat> also with us today are our wonderful guests. Um, please join me in welcoming Rayshawn Jenkins, Lyle Thompson, and Danielle Lote. Danielle, did I get your name right? Hopefully. It's Lote, but yeah. Oh, okay, Danielle Lote. <laughs> if I mispronounce anyone else's name, please let me know, but I think I got you guys right. <laughs> um, so Rayshawn, why don't you start us off and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, maybe tell us, you know, what ancestral land you're, you're speaking to our students from. Um, and, um, and, you know, Tell us a little bit about your Native American heritage as well. That'd be wonderful. So how's everyone doing? I'm Rayshawn Jenkins, uh, safety for the Jacksonville Jaguars of the National Football League, uh, American football. I was born and raised in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I'm about a quarter, so 25% Chippewa or Ojibwe. Indian awesome. um, and I'm just here I'm happy to be here I'm here to uh, bring awareness and learn more of you know uh, uh, more about that part of me uh, and like I just said I'm happy to be here and thanks for having me. Awesome thank you so much Rayshawn. Um, Lyle can you tell uh, our, our viewers a little bit about yourself as well? Yes, can also go away. Um, the house and only name Yasu or Swak Kayon, no go shout there on Nunde Gahono now. Quento there. Um, my traditional given name is the house and under it means he's flying over us. I am Hawk Clan from the Analog Nation, which is in central New York. Um, and I play professional lacrosse. Um, I play in the Premier Lacrosse League and the National Lacrosse League. Um, I'm a Nike athlete. And, you know, for us, lacrosse isn't it? I mean, it is a Native American game. And, and I was born with a stick. Um, so right from when I was a kid, I, I had a stick in my hands, um, not even by choice, um, just sort of a tradition that's really passed on from, from generation to generation. So my father's played the game. My grandfather has played the game. My great grandfather has played the game mm -hmm. right up my bloodline. Um, we've all played the traditional game of lacrosse and I've been fortunate enough to to play it my whole life I, I went off to college at the University of Albany and um, now I get to play professionally and internationally so it's a pleasure to be here thank you all for being here and I'm looking forward to um, having this conversation and, and sharing some of our experiences awesome great Danielle do you want to introduce yourself to our viewers Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Danielle Lote, and I am a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. Um, my mother is from Oklahoma, but I'm also um, half British. My dad's from London. 
And um, I am the Acting Associate Director for Advancement at the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian. So I'm not as exciting as the other two in terms of sports, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm delighted to be with the group to, uh, to talk a little bit uh, about our different cultures. Um, I love the var uh, variety of representation that we have, because um, I think that's one of the things that people probably don't realize the most is the large variety of uh, tribes that really are represented um, within um, the United States. And um, yeah, I, uh, I worked at the National Museum of the American Indian two different times, um, and I've been there this last time for about 10 years in fundraising. Wonderful, thank you so much, Danielle. And I love all of these shout outs or these um, identifications, yeah. we have Marshall from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with us. Um, someone is here, Susan um, is on Olone land. I think I said that right. Um, they're from Daly City, California and Fernando Rivera School. So awesome to have you with us here today. Um, we have um, someone from Jag Bogalusa High School in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for putting that information in there. Um, and so let's get started with our event, shall we? Um, we're actually going to start with a poll, so it'll be a little interactive. Um, I'll go ahead and read the question and you'll see the answer show up on the screen and go ahead and post your answer and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, we'll have our, our wonderful guests um, engage with you in discussions on that. Our first question is, when you're in a tough situation, what's the best thing to do first? Go ahead and, and select what applies to you. And you can choose all of the above, so. <clears throat> okay, here's our results. It looks like most people do all of the above, um, but lots of people also take a step back to think about their choices. That's great. Um, many people ask for help. Um, and then some people talk to a trusted friend or parent. These are all wonderful choices. And I personally would have probably chosen all of the above. Um, Lyle, what would you have chosen? No, I, 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 um, I kind of took the question literal. So I definitely would have um, just taken a step back, but all of the above sort of like, if I were to throw it in an order, um, yeah. I definitely do all, all four of them. Cool, cool. Awesome, great. Well, let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> okay, true or false? Is it okay to treat someone poorly because they are different than you? <clears throat> Okay, go ahead and choose your response. Okay, we got 100% false. That's wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Um, and Danielle, I mean, I'm assuming you would have chosen false as well, but do you want to comment on that question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely false. Um, I think I've yeah, it's, I find it really interesting to get to know people who are different than me um, and just sort of understand where they came from, maybe why they are the way that they are, and, um, and maybe also even just um, figure out where we're similar, because I think most of the time, as, as humans, we're a lot more similar than we are different in some ways, so. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think, you know, we live in a time where um, we, we are not focusing so much on our similarities and but we're all you know we're all human we're all five-fingered beings um, okay great next question okay the most important character trait is to develop what well you can also choose all of the above these are good options
Okay, let's see what the risk. Okay, all of the above. Very, very good. Rayshawn, what would you have chosen? Yeah, I would definitely say all of the above. I think, um, you know, having a little, a little bit of all of that and having everything balanced and being just a well-rounded person will just take you a long way and carry you just a long way with people and in life. Absolutely, great point. Thank you. Okay, next question. True or false, you can tell what someone's heritage is just by looking at them. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, go ahead and post your answer. <clears throat> okay, false, very good. Um, Lyle, do you want to? comment on this a little bit? I'm sure people make judgments about your heritage when they see you. No, yeah, I mean, you can, uh, you can, you can never judge a book by its cover. And um, it's, it's always important to, to get to know somebody and ask those questions. So um, for sure. Awesome, great. Next question. Okay, which of these is not a technique you should use to make someone new feel welcome? Okay, you pick one of these. So this is something you would not do to make someone new feel welcome. Okay, and everyone, 100%, very good, everyone. <laughs> um, most of, all of you selected um, that ignoring someone and waiting for someone else to say hi is not a technique to make someone new feel welcome. Uh, Rayshawn, do you wanna comment on that? I would have chose that one as well, and I was happy to see that all of you guys chose that as well. You know, that is not nice, uh, especially if, you know, that's someone you like or love, or that's your friend, um, or someone you associate with. Um, just at the end of the day, just be respectful. And if that's your friend, say hi. That's a nice thing to do. Okay, great. Awesome. Yes, we have A plus students here with us today. Excellent. Um, well, thanks, everyone. I think that's our last question. Um, we're going to move on to a Q&A session. Uh, I'm going to ask our guests some specific questions. Um, and, um, but don't worry, you'll have a chance to ask questions as well. Um, let's see. First question. Um, okay, Danielle, who are your Native American or Indigenous role models growing up? Uh, well, I would probably have to say first and foremost is my mom um, and my great grandmother and my aunties. Um, and uncles. Uh, if I didn't say that, they'd probably also be very disappointed. <laughs> but they, they might be watching. They, <laughs> might be watching. <laughs> they were um, they were the first, you know, to welcome me into this world, and they were, uh, you know, who I watched and modeled. And um, I'm very proud of of where I came from. Um, but I would also say um, a huge role model as I became more aware of the world around me was um, Wilma Mankiller, who was our first female principal uh, chief of the Cherokee Nation and really um, did so much for uh, revitalizing our community, our healthcare, our education, um, and reinvesting in the people of our nation. Uh, so she's always been somebody that I, um, well, when she was on this earth that I looked up to and, and to this day, I still reflect back on her and you know, what would Wilma do? <laughs> kind of questions. <laughs> wow, that's a great question. And there's actually a wonderful PBS documentary. I think it's PBS. There's a documentary on Wilma that's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I encourage everyone to watch that as part of your celebration of Native American Heritage Month. 
Um, okay. Um, Lyle, why don't you share with us what your favorite part of Native American or Indigenous culture is? That's kind of a trick question. <laughs> um, my favorite part of our culture. Um, I would just say, you know, I'm not even sure this is this is a phrase or anything, but just like our indigenousness, um, our mindset, what we have to bring to, to the table, which has really changed. I can't say change, but it's much different than the Western mind or the Western culture. So I think, um, you know, understanding, and I think from a young age, I understood this, not just through lacrosse, but just in our, our, cere our ceremonies and our traditions, but knowing that we're human beings, um, knowing what human being means, and knowing that like um, human is our physical form, being is our spirit. And I think that's what indigenousness is, is, is understanding that and understanding that um, we're, we're all made up of the same metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. And we give thanks to all those things that aren't just, their, their earth suit isn't blood, flesh, flesh, bone. It, sometimes it's bark, sometimes it's leaves, sometimes it's, um, it's other things, it's fur, um, hide. So we look at those things and to me, um, I learned a lot through the game of lacrosse. I learned a lot from my stick. My stick came. I used one stick from from um, six years old to 12 years old, and it was made of hickory wood. And my father made sure I understood where the stick came from and that it had life and it had spirit. And um, that was sort of where I first started to understand that mindset. Um, so I think that's sort of the coolest thing, and I still continue to learn about it and practice that mindset. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lyle. Um, and I said it was a trick question because, you know, there are five, over 570 Indigenous nations in the United States, uh, and each has its own language and culture. Um, but Lyle is right that we do share kind of that, that mindset of everything being interrelated, right? And so many Indigenous nations, their word for their people is you know, it's human being or it's the people, right? Like Diné, that, that's the Navajo word for, um, for my people and, and means people um, that kind of separates us from, from other beings on this planet. You know, the rock beings, the animal, different types of animal beings, the water beings, wind beings. Um, so, but yeah, that, that, that was, I love that, that story. Um, so Wei Sean, what makes you most proud to come from a, a Chippewa Cree heritage? <clears throat> uh, just like I said in my intro, you know, I was learning more about it. Um, and I was here to learn more about it today, but just hearing Lyle talk about, especially that mindset. And, you know, I pride myself of being a, a, very, very strong-minded person, uh, you know, just like lacrosse is a native, native game to, you know, indigenous people, the game of football, you know, is very, is very important to my other half as well of African-American, you know, just being in, and growing up in that inner city. Um, so just having a mindset and never knowing where that kind of came from and, I would definitely say, you know, it's it's just extinct, instinctual or, uh, you know, genetic almost. Like I I I try to explain, you know, to people a lot, you know, just just, just that mindset, and I can never kind of tell people how I kind of got it. So I, I would definitely say, you know, that I could give credit to to my native part, you know, and being a part of, you know, that nation. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much, Rishan. Um, okay, Danielle, what is one thing that you want others to know about Native Americans that they might not already know? Um, well, I did love that you brought up there's over 570 federally recognized tribes just in the United States alone. Um, and I think that's really for me, I found that to be one of the most important things to realize um, about the diversity, right? And um, really that just, you know, being 
someone saying that I'm native is just the top, you know, layer of it, like going deeper in terms of what nation they're from, what, what are their traditions, what's their language, you know, what's their creation story. There's so much different diversity in that. But I think also um, that we're still here. <laughs> And um, you know we're uh, we're strong, we're resilient, we're still here, and we uh, we walk in many different um, professional careers. You know, there's doctors, there's lawyers, there's environmentalists, there's sports, uh, you know, um, professional sports. There's people who work at museums like me, um, everywhere. You know, and so we're here. There's a lot of diversity, and um, and that um, there's. There's even for me as a native person, I don't know all there is to know about native people, you know, so I can answer what I know and what I grew up with and what I've come to learn through my life, but I've still got much to learn and my opinion doesn't speak for every native person either. I think that's another thing, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I, you know, I have a native friend and they say X, well, you might have another native person and they might feel very differently. So there's a lot of diversity in opinion too. Absolutely. That's so true. And, you know, I just want to note uh, for folks, in addition to the incredible diversity of Indigenous nations that we have here in the United States, there are actually 100 to 200 um, Indigenous nations that are considered uncontacted peoples. They've never actually interacted with um, people who are not Indigenous. Um, most of those live in South America, um, like in the Amazon forests. Um, and so there, there's a lot of diversity. There are indigenous peoples in China, indigenous peoples in um, Europe. So, you know, there's, there's just such incredible, yeah. incredible diversity. Totally agree. I also think sometimes with our museum, um, the National Museum of the American Indian, we're hemispheric. So we represent the entire Western hemisphere of indigenous people, not just in the United States. Um, so, you know, again, like you were speaking about, you know, just the diversity of Indigenous people within the, just this hemisphere alone, too. And one thing I love about the NMAI is the exhibit that you have, uh, where each tribe designs their own exhibit. You know, it's giving voice to them to define for themselves who they are, uh, which is so incredibly empowering and beautiful. Um, well, Lyle, is there anything that you want to share with our viewers um, about Indigenous people that they might not already know? Um, about Indigenous people, I, I would just say, um, sure. Uh, I mean, I, I think a huge part of, of what a lot of us need to continue to, to educate ourselves about, and especially something I think should be a part of, you know, school curriculum is what has happened over the past year on residential school properties and boarding school properties and finding unmarked graves that are on those these school properties and i think it's a really important discussion because you know we can't put a finger on how much that has made us who we are um there's still a lot we're we're learning about that you know my my grandfather his first language was mohawk and I look down the generation to my father. Uh, he speaks very little. And I'm a part of the generation that's sort of revitalizing that because I also speak very little, but my, my kids, I'm learning from my kids. So um, not just that aspect, the language aspect, but um, the trauma, the effects it's had on us as people within our communities and how it's really separated us from knowing who we are in one, becoming a community, Community. community tribe is 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 so much that's unity that's um being able to come together and empower one another learn from one another and be encouraging to one another so you can you can walk a path that you don't feel is is um full of prickers if you will you know what i mean you're walking a path that's already been beaten and cleared for you so um you can't really put a finger on how that's affected us, but I think it's really important for everybody here to know that that happened and know that we're still finding um, these bodies on these school properties. Thank you for raising that one. Um, it's a difficult issue. And I mean, even today, there are still 9,000, over 9,500 
residential schools in the United States where indigenous children are separated from their families. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, it's not always a matter of choice. Um, and today there was recognition of my uncle who was the um, first PhD graduate, Navajo graduate from the University of Arizona. And, um, you know, that's a beautiful story and I'm blessed to have that educational um, heritage. But, you know, my grandparents sent their children to live with Mormon families in Utah so they would have food to eat, right? Not necessarily because they could get an education. Um, because of the, the lack of investment and resources in Indian country, and also you know, the, the removal of food um, in our communities uh, to make us more dependent on the government and, and disempower our communities. Um, and I, I also think the one thing I'll say, sorry to cut you off, is, is that we're, we're not able to, and I've said this before, but like in terms of Native American history, we're not able to, to learn about our ghost, learn about our history. Whereas when you look at, you know, we've learned about what happened in Nazi Germany in the Jewish people there. We've learned about what happened here in America with that, the African-American people. Um, and it's a part of our curriculum. It's part of what you learn. But in Native America and what we're learning about our own history, it's non-existent. So for one, being Native, I don't get to learn about it, but also everybody else outside of my community isn't learning about it too. So how, how do we heal from that without even knowing about it? So I'm just starting to learn about it. My grandparents who who are in these institutions, um, they don't want to talk about it. So it's, uh, it, is, it is something, that's why I, I've been stressing how, it, how important it is for us to make sure that it's, it's a part of curriculum. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is a conversation. So Danielle or Rishan, if you want to chime in on this point relating to um, boarding school. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would say, um, you know, uh, you know, just hearing Danielle and Lyle, you know, Danielle speaking about, you know, the, uh, you know, how diverse and how you know because looking at me you you wouldn't tell that i had you, you probably wouldn't tell you or you probably could tell that i had native american heritage in me so it's important to know that you know um everyone looks different you know and 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 and, and native americans are represented amongst you know a variety of of of, of fields and, and places amongst the united states and then loud and just hearing loud speak I didn't know much about, you know, what was going on, but you know, that is a beautiful story. And us being professional athletes, we need to use our platforms to bring awareness to stories and situations um, like that. Cause voices, you know, there's voices that might, you know, need a little more volume and that we can bring light to. And uh, I, I feel that that is important, especially if we have the platform to do that. Absolutely. Uh, I totally agree. Um, you know, I grew up on the Navajo Nation um, and really hadn't left home um, ever <laughs> until I left for college. And I, I went to college in the Northeast and it was such an eye opening experience. Um, you know, I, I didn't know about the history of um, indigenous peoples, indigenous nations. I went to a public school in Arizona, and I just remember being shocked in, in high school that we would cover like the, the Hohokam and the Anasazi, you know, ancestral peoples that no longer, I mean, accept, I mean, their descendants continue to exist, but they are no longer nations. Um, and then we would never talk about indigenous peoples again, right? Um, and, and I remember, you know, I, I grew up without running water or electricity. Um, in a pretty traditional remote Navajo household. And, and even today, a third of Navajo people don't have running water or electricity. Um, and I always wonder like, why is my life so different? Like I could see, I live right along on the border of our reservation and I could literally see the nearest off reservation town that was 20 miles away. And I always wonder like, why, why do I have to like walk to an outhouse to go to the bathroom? Um, and, and how come I can't open a refrigerator and have cold cereal for breakfast when like the poorest kid in Winslow 
can do that any day of the week, right? Um, you know, what makes things so different when you cross that reservation line? Um, and so, I mean, when I, when I went to the Northeast um, and I encountered different indigenous peoples and, and I studied history, um, I studied the history of colonization. I kind of stumbled into this class and I learned the dispossession of indigenous nations. There was a book by Richard White um, that was called All of Your Misfortune and None of My Own that really laid it out very clearly. Uh, and we actually had a conversation about, um, in my history class, one of the students was very mad and he was like, this is, these, you know, this is not true. Um, and, and one of the students um, was very passionate and upset. And she was like, you know, what happened to the indigenous peoples here was genocide. And there was this huge debate. Um, and, um, and, and, and that, that really, that, that is the story of indigenous nations, whether it's taking our children and educating them in, in off-reservation communities, in non-indigenous homes, um, and trying to assimilate them so that they forget who they are as in indigenous peoples. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, I feel like when I learned the history of Northeastern natives, um, and I, I, I saw like the intermar high intermarriage rates, indigenous peoples in the Northeast were the first indigenous nations hit by colonization. Um, and many of their people didn't survive. And in order to survive, they had to intermarry uh, and kind of go underground as indigenous peoples in order to you know, continue existing. Um, and so that's why you see so much intermarriage. Um, a lot of tribal communities in, in many areas um, have that, that mixed heritage. But what's so beautiful <laughs> is that if you go to those kids, even today, you know, they're like, I'm indigenous. And they 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 know in their heart who they are as indigenous peoples. I think that's so powerful. Danielle, did you want to add something? Yeah, um, I so appreciate that. just even the depth of this conversation doesn't usually even get touched upon sometimes, especially with um, you know the group the, the the students that are joining us today. So, you know, um, my my aunts and uncles went to uh, boarding school, they went to Shiloko, um, and uh, my mom's first language is Cherokee as well as them, but I, like Lyle, can relate to, um, you know, they, I wasn't taught Cherokee because it, it really wasn't something they thought, you know, it, it had to do with the oppression of, um, and, and racism, you know, quite frankly, of um, will it, you know, how far will it get you if, you know, you, it'd be better off if you were in college or this or that. But um, I've also started learning Cherokee again, and my mom couldn't be happier that I work at the museum now. And she's like, you know, we could have tried to, you know, they tried to take your culture away and it still came back to, you know, like, um, and so I think it is, you know, I, the thing I take the most pride in is, um, you know, working at the museum, we are working towards changing um, curriculum in the schools to make sure there is representation of Native people um, in the curriculum that's taught. And, and I'll put it in the uh, in the chat too. We have a website, Native Knowledge 360, where we're continuing to produce curriculum um, that is uh, relevant to Native history and present day. And um, and I, I agree. You know, oftentimes I say I learned from the same textbooks that everybody else did when I went to school. And so to not see representation of yourself um, in the history that's taught can be very um, isolating and um, and it can leave a child wondering, you know, why am I not represented? I could identify a lot with what Lyle was saying about that. So I do think it's really important. Um, students, if you're interested, ask your teachers to look up curriculum that's relevant and to learn more about Native people, because I do think it's, it's extremely important to learn about the history um, of our country and to know the truth of it, um, not for anything other than to just know the truth. I think that's extremely important um, because that I think makes us all better citizens moving forward. It makes you more empathetic for other people and cultures. And it also, um, I think, makes the difference between whether or not we repeat our mistakes. Awesome, thanks so much, Danielle. Okay, guys, next question. <clears throat> What aspect of character is important in the Native American or Indigenous culture from your perspective? Would anyone like to answer that? I would think that 
you know, thinking of the next generations to come. To me, I think that's one of the things I've always, um, you know, I do think it's, you know, you can't, one size doesn't fit for all for every tribe. So there's different traditions, different, you know, ceremonies, all of those things. But I think if you were to look at, you know, the way the elders um, think about the choices they make and how that affects, usually it's like seven generations is what most people will say. Um, you know, how will that affect the future? And so the children are really important in the next generation. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd have a similar uh, answer um, in terms of that seven generation thinking because it, it really is, um, and you hear that a lot. You hear the seventh generation term a lot um, with our mindset and thinking about the next generation. So it's really a, a reasonable number. When I, when I look at it, when I put it on paper, you know what I mean? Like my great grandfather who was the Karadaho basically um, the president of our democracy, the Haudenosaunee democracy, he, he's impacted my kids. Um, and that's seven generations right there. My great grandfather to, to my kids, um, or my kids' kids, and he's played a huge impact on my life. So that sort of kind of thinking is important. And I, and I think a huge part of it is, is respect. Um, you know, our culture, if I were to say, you know, there's, there's a character that, a characteristic you have to have, um, have to develop within our culture, it's, it's respect because everything we do is, is about respect. It's about respecting the rest of the beings of the earth. It's about respecting the people around you. Um, so I just think when, when you bring respect to the table, it does bring, um, this sense of unity together and, and will help the greater good. You know I mean, um, you can help the people around you and you can bring people together. And the more minds you bring together, um, the more powerful it becomes, the message becomes. There's in our Thanksgiving address at the end of each thank you, you know, we give thanks to the earth and then everything, everything right up from the water to the animals, the plants, the medicines, thunder and lightnings, the four beings, sun, moon, stars, the creator, the spirit that lives in all things. But at the end of each thank you, we say, and what that means is, and now we bring our minds together as one. Um, and that's a respect thing. That's a unity thing. That's a, that's a way of knowing what true power is because um, if you can bring your minds together as one, when energies come together on the same mission, it's more powerful. Same thing with a tornado, same thing with a hurricane, same thing with human minds coming together. When it comes together as one, it becomes more powerful. It's the same thing in sports. You know, I think Rashawn understands that too. When, when, when you develop a championship team, that's, that's the team that can come together and have the same mindset and do things for one another. Um, and I think that's a, that's to me an indigenous characteristic. Absolutely, that's beautiful. Rayshan, do you want to weigh in? <clears throat> um, if I had to pick a characteristic, I would probably pick uh, patience. And then my, I want to say my voice, or my opinion, doesn't speak for you know the entire you know native community or indigenous community. But I would just say patience, it's, and not. Uh, more so just with the outside world, you know, um, uh, they just have so much more to learn, you know, about, uh, you know, the culture and, you know, just getting this ideology or stereotypes, you know, that are formed in, in, in people's head of, you know, just any minorities or, you know, people of color, you know, it, 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 it's just about teaching and, um, you know, and, you know, that comes with patience a lot of times. So I, I would just say, if I had to pick a characteristic, I would, I would say that. You know, if I had to pick a characteristic, I think it, it's very similar to what you guys are all saying. It's love, right? It's radical love. It's loving everyone, no matter who they are, their background. 
Um, it's recognizing that we're all human beings, right? And that we're all interconnected. You know, all beings on this planet are related um, in some way and acknowledging that. And, you know, it feeds into like respect. That's why you treat people with respect because you're approaching them with love. Um, <clears throat> So, wow, this is really cool. Okay, guys, um, I think we have time for one more question. And then students, please start thinking of questions because we're gonna turn to you for questions next. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, are there any misconceptions about Native Americans or indigenous peoples or our culture that you would like to um, address with the students just to make sure that that they don't carry forward those misconceptions. Um, and this is open to whoever wants to answer the question first. Go <laughs> for it, Maya. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I, I would just say that that we're we're not a we're not a thing of the past. Uh, it goes back to what Danielle said at the beginning, whereas we're, we're very, very relevant. Um, we're still here today. We're resilient. Um, and we're, we have a lot to bring to the table. We have a whole mindset. We have a whole, whole lot to bring to the table. So we're not, we're not something of the past. And, and I think where that conception comes from is stereotypes. It comes from, you know, mascots. Um, We've we've been looked at as something that is that is ancient and no longer exists in a way, um, and we're now, you know, starting to let people know that you know we're still here. We live amongst you, everybody here, and we do have have something to bring to the table. So that's the biggest thing I would say. Awesome, thank you, Lyle. And I I would expect uh, the attack to answer the question first. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Lyle. Um, and Danielle, I, I saw that you wanted to chime in on that. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, we have, um, it's, there's a, pub, I don't mean to keep bringing up the museum, but it's where I work. So like, it's kind of like Lyle talking about lacrosse or Sean talking about football. Like, so I'll talk about the museum. Um, I would say that, um, you know, we have a book called Do All Indians Live in Teepees? And it kind of is, um, a, a 101 of questions we've had over the years, um, different, different people who worked at the museum helped compile all these questions. And um, it's a great publication because I sometimes think that we can be lumped into one group. Even though we, we are considered one group, there, we continue, like we've talked about it earlier, the diversity. So not all tribes have headdresses, you know, um, not all tribes have teepees, you know, there's such a wide variety and diversity of, um, of traditional regalia and clothing and ceremonies. Um, so I think, you know, I continue to go back to that as just, I still to this day am fascinated when I get to learn about another tribe or nation's diversity and their, their traditions, um, because it's, it's, um, there's just, it's, it's, um, unending the different things you can learn about about native tribes. Absolutely, absolutely. My uh, my son is half Hopi, um, and when everyone hears that, you know, traditionally or not traditionally, but the most recent history of the relations between Navajo and Hopi has been not not positive. Okay, because we've we've been fighting over land, um, and many of our people. Have been relocated to demarcate the boundary between Navajo and Hopi. Um, so it's, it's a tough history. Um, but um, even myself, you know, growing up in our community, um, getting to know my partner and learning about his culture has been really incredible. And um, there's been these really interesting things where it's like, wow, our worldview is so different. Um, you know, like for Navajos, everything directionally moves in, an, in a clockwise fashion. This is just an example. And then, so like when you enter a Hogan, you enter it in a clockwise fashion. Um, and there are many other things that, that feed into that. But for Hopis, everything moves in a counterclockwise fashion. 
It's like, that's so interesting. We're neighbors, but you know, we have such a, a huge difference and something so fundamental as that. Um, so interesting, that incredible diversity. Um, but Rayshawn, were you gonna weigh in? I didn't mean to, to um, jump in there, but. <clears throat> No, just uh, having love at the end of the day and just knowing that, you know, everybody brings something to the table and don't just judge someone based on, you know, how they may look or, you know, how they may perceive things, but just judge someone by their heart. You know, um, I would just say that's the most important thing at the end of the day and just uh, knowing and learning how to coexist with everybody. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I love that. And um, just to build on that point, um, I, I challenge all of our students um, to, um, to tap into your indigenous heart. If you have indigenous heritage, you know, learn more about that um, and, and try to approach the world from that space. Um, one of the most empowering things I, I encountered in college, um, because actually, you know, my dad has Spanish heritage. Um, and I grew up in, a, in an all Navajo community, so I looked really different from the other students. And there, there were many challenges to my Navajo-ness by my classmates. <laughs> so when I entered college, I, I didn't really feel like I could own my indigenous identity because it had been challenged so often. Um, and I read this amazing book. Um, <clears throat> and, and at the end of the book, it, it said, you know, say with your um, with your white tongue what your indigenous heart believes, and that really helped me gain ownership of that side of my identity, um, and and feel like yeah, my heart is indigenous, even though I might not look stereotypically Navajo. <laughs> um, it's okay, and I'm going to use what I've gained um, to to benefit my people, um, and so that's that's what I'm doing right now, <laughs> and. Um, Great. Well, let's let's turn things over to the students. We have ten minutes left. Um, any burning questions? Uh, any any brave students who want to uh, raise the first question for our guest? I mean, come on, guys. When do you have a panel like this? It's just a phenomenal panel. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Okay, here we go from IS two eighty six in Harlem. They say, we would like to know what motivates each of you to keep going. Great, awesome. Okay, guys, when the, when the going gets tough, um, what motivates you? I, I would, I'll answer that. And, and this coming from like a, um, not just an athletic standpoint, but lacrosse has been such a huge part of, of my life that, Honestly, I look at a lot of the lessons I've learned come from the game, but at the same time, lacrosse being a Native American game, it's very intertwined within our culture. So the same lessons we, we were trying to practice at, in our culture, in our longhouse, I've happened to develop through lacrosse. And three, three points I always point out, respect, playing with a clear mind, playing with clarity. So, you know, you can't make a decision if your mind's disordered. Um, so I always try to play with a clear mind, no matter what happens. If a ref makes a bad call, if um, if someone will ax me in the neck, anything like that, I, I always try to look at it as like, this is happening for me, not to me. Um, and take that approach. It allows me to keep a clear mind. And I know that I'm more optimal with a clear mind. And that, that to me is long-term thinking. Um, it's seventh generation thinking. And the last one, and honestly, the most important is to have fun. The game for me is about our enjoyment for ourselves, the spirit in ourselves, and for the creator. And um, that's what keeps me going. It's, it's, it's um, when things get tough, when things start to, to start to, you know, turn into a struggle or get stressful, whether it's my training or my diet or the way I'm approaching the game, I change it up. I change it up so that it's more fun. Um, or I take a break. Sometimes that's what I need. So what keeps me going is um, is 
those three things and knowing that I still have more to learn. I always try to be a student to the game and a student in life. That, that's, that's really profound. Um, we haven't had a chance to really talk about the Six Nations and their legacy in this country, but the Six Nations were the foundation of democracy and the foundation for the formation of the United States government. The concept of a confederacy that all people are made equal, those are indigenous concepts. And they were learned by Benjamin Franklin from the Six Nations and brought back and incorporated into the design of the country. But lacrosse is actually not just a sport, but it was a form of resolving uh, diplomatic challenges. So instead of going to war, communities would have a lacrosse game and, and solve their dispute that way. Uh, so kind of, a, I wish modern day leaders would um, employ such, <laughs> such means to resolving disputes on the international, even, even locally and nationally. Um, but Danielle, did you wanna weigh in on, on this question? Um, I would just say what motivates me is, um, you know, I, I believe that the creator created each one of us for a reason. And, um, and it's our, you know, it's our destiny to fulfill that. We might not know what it is. Um, and there are some days when it, you know, the weight of either your problems or the things that are going on, or you've got a lot of work on your plate uh, or you're tired, you know, um, I always try to remember, okay, I'm here to be of service. And, um, and what can I do today to help another and um and you'd be surprised how good you can feel at the end of the day when you stay motivated by how can i help how can i help another um so usually if i'm feeling down or low i figure out how can i help somebody else and that usually helps to make me be motivated and keep going awesome thanks for sharing that danielle Rishan. yeah and i will say uh you know, if I had to pick three things that that motivated me, I would say, you know, uh, in no particular order, you know, I would say just just when I'm when I'm gone, I, I want to be known for something. Uh, you know, I want to leave a legacy here on this earth. You know, so I always wake up with always trying to become the best version of myself every single day. Like, how can I get better? than I was yesterday, you know, than I were yesterday. So I always, you know, think about that. You know, that's a, that's a big motivator for me. You know, number two is representing where I come from, you know, and representing my people. You know, I, I want people to look at me on whatever platform I'm on and say, hey, you know, he's representing his people well. And I'd like to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by that, you know. Um, and I would, I would say the third motivator would be, you know, just like Danielle said again, was just, you know, helping people. I, I, I like to help good people, you know, a good person. I really do, um, love to help. And, you know, my creator, he's given me the ability to do so. So, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. That's beautiful. I love that. Thank you guys. This, that was such a great question. Um, so thank you so much, um, IS286 in Harlem. Phenomenal question. The next question is for you, Rayshawn. Um, what similarities do you see between the Black and Native American communities? <clears throat> uh, some similarities to me would be, uh, you know, other than being minorities, I would say, uh, you know, lack of resources, as far as uh, you know, food, housing, um, you know, certain jobs. Um, I would just say, just a, just overall being, you know, just the overall battle of being victims of you know systematic racism. You know, I, I, I would say that's just the biggest comparison between the two, in my opinion, or similarity. Yeah, I, I listened to this really great um, NPR piece on the, the Tulsa massacre, and it really went through, you know, the dispossession of wealthy African Americans in that community. Um, and it, it just, you know, resonated. I was like, wow, there's so many similarities here. 
to indigenous people's story. Um, and even just, you know, slavery, the story of slavery, there were indigenous slaves as well um, in, in, in the Southwest in particular. Um, so that a lot of shared history there, um, of course, not in the same way of course, at all, but, um, and then we have one other question um, from an art school being confidential there. I don't know which art school that is. Oh, wait, no, Midland Arts Conservatory. There you go. And they're asking, what role did art or dance play in your childhood? And how was it valued in your different or diverse background? So. Is this a question for me? Everyone, but you can start. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll start. Um, you know, <laughs> music is, is, was huge uh, for me growing up. You know, I can remember being at what we call, you know, block parties or team parties. It's just growing up with music around the house with your parents and stuff playing, you know, uh, music around the house. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't really uh, listen to any native or indigenous music growing up, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a well-rounded person when it comes to music. And, you know, um, just like I said, I'm here to learn about it and, and I want to learn about it. Awesome, cool. And we have two minutes, guys. So very quickly, Danielle and Lyle, if you could address that question as well. Yeah, I think um, I think with with both art and music, um, it just allows you to. It has allowed me to be more creative, and that's that's sort of my creative side where I really struggled mm -hmm. in other subjects in school. So I don't think um, I think it's you have to find what works for you, and you really have to fuel that part of you. Mm -hmm. For me, it was art. I actually became an art major. Um, so I, I, I'm still involved in that right from when I was a kid to now. But even though my struggle through grade school was really tough because um, I wasn't the best math student, science student, I did like history. But when it came to the arts of things, that's where I feel that's where I, I was passionate about things and I actually enjoyed school. So I would say that's, uh, that's what really helped me growing up. Awesome. Danielle? Um, well, I went, uh, art have, has always been around and my mom was a painter and uh, she did, wasn't professional, but she loved to paint. And so it was always around me. I went to school at FIT in Manhattan. So if anybody from FIT is watching, give a little shout out there. Um, but, uh, and it's always been an inspiration for me. And I actually ended up working at a museum when I got out of uh, college. I was uh, in the conservation department at the museum. So art's always been uh, something that's inspired me, um, that's drawn, um, uh, it's drawn out my imagination, and it's allowed me to express myself in good times and bad times. So, um, and it's was always valued in my family as well, both sides of it, my, my British family and my native family. So, um, so yeah, I always look at that as something that's, that's inspiring. Awesome. Oh, that's so great. I love this. Very well-rounded panel. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thanks so much for the awesome questions. We hope that you enjoy Native American History Month um, and we'll use this as an opportunity to continue learning about indigenous peoples, uh, particularly in your community. And, um, you know, remember like, you know, these wonderful role models here, they're, they operate from that base of, of character and you have all demonstrated incredible, impeccable character in our, in our polling earlier. So, you know, go forth and do good things um, and continue to, to operate from that base of character. So thank you everyone. Have a beautiful Native American Heritage Month. Mm -hmm.